Hi everyone, in this tutorial we learn how to both find and classify a function's stationary points using its derivative. And when I say classify, I could also say determine the nature of the stationary points. That is, figure out whether we're dealing with a maximum, a minimum, or a horizontal point of inflection. Now to do that, we're going to work through the example that we see here. We're told to find and classify the stationary points of y, which equals to f of x, where f of x equals to x cubed plus 6x squared minus 15x plus 3. So let's go ahead. The first thing we need to do is find the stationary points. And to find any stationary points, we need to figure out the values of x at which the derivative, f dash of x, equals to 0. And so we quickly see that we need the derivative, and we therefore have to differentiate this function. And in doing so, we find that f dash of x is equal to 3x squared plus 12x minus 15. And so f dash of x will equal to 0 when 3x squared plus 12x minus 15 equals to 0. So we need to solve this quadratic equation. And for that, we could either use the quadratic formula, or we could try and solve it by factoring. And I'll go ahead and factor it. Looking at the three terms that we have here, we can see that they all have a common factor, 3. And that tells me that I can rewrite this equation as 3 times in parentheses x squared plus 4x minus 5 close parentheses equals to 0. Now that that's done, it's much easier to factor the quadratic that's inside the pair of parentheses. Indeed, all I need to do is find two numbers which add up to positive 4 and whose product is negative 5. And I quickly find that that's 5 and negative 1, which allows me to write that this is the same as 3 times x plus 5 times x minus 1 equals to 0. Now that this is written in factored form, the solutions to this equation are quite easy to find. Indeed, since 3 can't equal to 0, either x plus 5 equals to 0, which leads to x equals to negative 5, or x minus 1 equals to 0, which leads to x equals to 1. And these two solutions tell us that our function has two stationary points, one with an x-coordinate of negative 5 and the other whose x-coordinate is 1. And to do the job properly, we should calculate the y-coordinates of each of the two stationary points. So let's go ahead. At the stationary point with x-coordinate negative 5, the y-coordinate will be y equals to f of negative 5. And that's equal to negative 5 cubed plus 6 times negative 5 squared minus 15 times negative 5 plus 3, where all I've done is replace every x I could see inside f of x by negative 5. And by all means check, but calculating that, I find that's equal to 103. In a similar way, I calculate the y-coordinate of the stationary point whose x-coordinate is 1. And for that, I state that y is equal to f of 1, and that's equal to 1 cubed plus 6 times 1 squared minus 15 times 1 plus 3. And again, do check, but I find that's equal to negative 5. And that's the first task done. We now know that our function has two stationary points, one with coordinates negative 5, 103, and the other whose coordinates are 1, negative 5. And in fact, we could go ahead and box those two stationary points. There we go. Now, the second thing we need to do is classify these two stationary points. And for that, I'm going to study the sign of the first derivative, f dash of x, on either side of each of these two stationary points. And this approach is often called the first derivative test. And here's how I do that. I start by making a table, something looking like this. There we go. And I use the very top row to show the domain over which f of x is defined, as well as highlight any values of x at which the first derivative, f dash of x, equals to zero. And I'll just write a little x on the left-hand side here. There we go. And f of x, well, it's a cubic polynomial, and it's perfectly well defined for all real numbers. And to highlight that fact, I'll go ahead and write negative infinity here and positive infinity here. And I do this to indicate that x can take on all real numbers between negative infinity and positive infinity. 
Next, since we're studying the sign of the derivative, I'm going to be interested in knowing where the derivative function f dash of x equals to zero. And we found earlier on that that's when x equals to negative five and when x equals to one. So I write negative five here and I'll write one right there. And directly below these two values at which f dash of x equals to zero, I draw two vertical lines like this. And that therefore creates the three columns I need inside my sign table. All right, now that that's done, I'm gonna look at f dash of x. And I'll use the fact that we can write it in factored form, in fact, we saw that right here, and state that f dash of x equals to three times x plus five times x minus one. And to really highlight that, I'll go ahead and box that result. There we go. Writing the derivative in its factored form is ideal for a sign table. And here's the whole idea. Each of the three factors that we have here is going to make one of the rows of our sign table. So the next row we enter in our table will tell us the sign of three. And I write that here, I write three right there, and I make the row, there we go. Now, regardless of the value of x, three is always positive. And in the sign table, I indicate that in each of the three columns that we have. In other words, for three, I write plus, plus, plus in each of the columns. Now, the next factor is x plus five. So that's the next row, I write x plus five here, and I complete the row, like so. And x plus five equals to zero when x equals to negative five. And to highlight that fact, I write a zero on this vertical line here. And now I study the sign of x plus five on either side of that zero. Well, when x is less than negative five, x plus five will be negative. And if you need to convince yourself of that, just try replacing x by saying negative six then we'd have negative six plus five, which is negative one. And so to show that x plus five is negative for x values less than negative five, I write a negative sign here. And now for x values greater than negative five, well, x plus five will be positive. And so I write a plus and another plus here. Finally, I look at the third factor, x minus one, and I write that here in the next row, x minus one, and I complete the row, there we go and x minus one will equal to zero when x equals to one. So I write a zero on this vertical line here, and I now study the sign of x minus one on either side of this value. Well, let's see, when x is less than one, x minus one will be negative. And so I write minus and minus here, and as soon as x is greater than one, then x minus one will be positive. So I write a plus sign here. Now in the last row, I write f dash of x. And since we saw that f dash of x equals to three times x plus five times x minus one, its sign, positive, negative, or zero, will be the product of each of the signs that we see in the rows above. Here's what I mean. We know that when x equals to negative five and when x equals to one, f dash of x will equal to zero. So we can start by writing zero right here and another zero here. And now between negative infinity and negative five, f dash of x will be positive times negative times negative, which is positive. Then between negative five and one, f dash of x will be positive times positive times negative, which will be negative. Finally, for x values greater than one, f dash of x will be positive times positive times positive, which is positive. And this last row allows us to classify the stationary points. Indeed, we know that when f dash of x is positive, the curve of f of x must be going upwards, in other words, it's increasing, and when it's negative, it must be decreasing. And so to really picture things properly, I like to add a very tall row to our table, like so, there we go. And I'll call this row f of x. And here's the whole idea. If f dash of x is positive, then f of x must be increasing. And I draw an arrow going upwards like so, to really show that the curve is going upwards. Next, if f dash of x is negative, then f of x must be decreasing. So I draw an arrow going downwards. Finally, f dash of x is positive again, so f of x must be going upwards. And now looking at these arrows, it's very clear what the function is actually doing. 
as we go from negative infinity to negative 5, the curve increases, it reaches a maximum, whose coordinates are here, negative 5, 103, which we could actually add to our table here, negative 5, 103. The curve then goes downwards, reaches a minimum, whose coordinates are 1, negative 5. So I'll add those coordinates as well, 1, negative 5, and then shoots back upwards. And we've now figured out what the stationary points are. Indeed, we could state our final answer as the stationary point negative 5, 103 is a maximum. So I'll just write max. And the stationary point 1, negative 5, so that's 1, negative 5, is a minimum. So I'll just write min. And we could go ahead and box that final answer. There we go. And although I assumed throughout this that we didn't have access to a calculator, if we were to plot f of x on our graphical calculator, then we'd quickly be able to confirm these results. And in fact, we see it right here. We can see that as we go from left to right, the curve increases, reaches a maximum at negative 5, 103. It then shoots back downwards to reach a minimum at 1, negative 5, and finally shoots back upwards, which confirms our results. And there we go. That's how we can both find and classify stationary points using the first derivative. And that's it for this tutorial.